Right now we're at the height of 2024 and a lot of camera gear has just come out. Uh, there are so many different new things pushing the envelope of what's possible in technology. But I wanted to make this video because at the end of the day, camera gear is an investment in your career. It's an investment in your profession and what you do. And the key word there is investment. Over the course of my career, I've had a lot of investments in gear that have either panned out or not panned out, right? But at the end of the day, in any business, in any line of work, no risk, no reward. And with every failure, you learn something and you say, well, I'm not going to do that again. Or maybe that worked pretty well. So let's try that again because we're analyzing the data and we're going by trends. So with that being said, I've had a lot of experience, at least over the past five years, buying a lot of gear and seeing other people's, uh, you know, mistakes and, and successes and things like that. So this is something I really wanted to talk to. Let's say this year you want to upgrade your camera. You've been shooting with said camera for a while and then you want to upgrade to the next latest and greatest thing. I think there's a couple things to take into accountability. Ask yourself realistically what type of productions you do how this new piece of gear would benefit you. Does it logistically make your shooting easier? Does it offer new things to your clients? And number three, how, how are you going to offset the cost of investing into this piece of camera gear? Let's go not too expensive, but not too cheap. Let's say you want to buy a Komodo X, right? $10,000 plus AKS, let's say in taxes, let's say you're about 15 grand, right? You just spent $15,000, right? Awesome. You got new frame rates. You got a shiny new red badge that you can flex everywhere and you got tons of dynamic range. Sick. Amazing. But you just spent what most people drive as a car every single day. So consider that when you are spending that money and you are using it with clients, are those clients going to pay a kit fee for you to be able to pay back the loan or the cash that you've just paid back uh, for that camera when buying it? Are those shoots that you are doing high ticket enough to where you have the crew that can help you operate that camera? First AC, uh, do you have the supporting gear that will go along with that camera? I've seen it so many times where people blow their whole wad on getting this really expensive camera, but they got no cage, they have one battery, they have one card, and they don't even have a tripod that can handle that camera. And then at the end of the day, they don't even have any lenses that can go on that mount, and they just spent a car on a camera that they can barely use. So these are all questions to ask yourself when you are upgrading for gear. The other thing that I would ask myself when buying gear, and these are mistakes that I've made too, is what marketplace am I in? Let me speak on LA for a second. I am glad that I never bought anything more expensive um, than what I currently own, you know, going above 15,000 to that 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 mark once you start to get to the uh, the, the more top level reds and airy systems and things like that, because in LA market share, we have an insane amount of saturation. So what that means is if you bought an area Alexa mini for between 30 and 50,000, depend on the, the condition of your camera, you are probably going to rent that camera averaging from 250 to maybe 400 personally, if you're lucky. Now, because there is so much market saturation, you can get in line with every other broke DP and their grandmother in LA who also bought an Alexa Mini trying to rent it on ShareGrid. Now, you may get some rentals, you may not. Um, you may do great. Maybe you're connected, maybe you have the right connections um, and maybe you shoot so much that pr the productions you do work on are willing to rent your camera and in that case, I think it is a good investment. And I'm not saying all of this to be negative and I'm not saying all of this to shoot your dreams down. I'm just saying when you take risk, try to calculate and mitigate the possibility of losing a lot of your money or being a slave to a monthly payment when you are financing something this expensive. Because I've seen it so many times. I have people hit me up all the time. Hey man, you want to shoot with my mini? I'll rent it to you for like 300 and I'll throw in lenses and I'll throw in the tarot deck and this, that, because they just need to get the thing out because at the end of the month, they got to pay Abel Cine or they got to pay, you know, one main financial on their loan or you know they have to pay their rent that month and they blew all of their savings on this extremely expensive camera 
and some of these people are extremely talented artists. These are hardworking people, and they put all of their hopes and dreams into this one basket, into this big plastic piece of uh, sensor image capturing thing, and it's not panning out for them the way that they thought it would, and it's sad to see. And I've been there myself, and I bought very expensive things in the past that I had loans on, and my monthly overhead was so high that it was excruciating, and I've since sold off a lot of that stuff. And it sucks because we love these tools, we love to create things, and we love to feel like we have the freedom to create whatever we want because we own more gear and we own all of these things, and sometimes it doesn't work out. And again, that does not mean that buying gear is a bad thing. It just means that when you do buy gear and when you do invest into gear, it should be a very calculated decision. These are questions that you should ask yourself and these are things that you should really consider before you put yourself in a really, really bad spot financially. And I've made these mistakes and this is why I make this video. Now to wrap up the video, I just wanna talk about a couple of scenarios to maybe be a little bit of a broken record on where it might be a good idea to invest in some gear, right? So like I said, number one, if you have shoots where they are willing to pay for a kit fee and you are always getting those kit fees on a consistent basis all the damn time and you are able to help offset the cost of that camera with that kit fee and the camera is not too expensive and you might pay it off in a year a year and a half or less i would say shorter is better um that might be good for you i would say if it is a lower cost of equipment that you want to invest in at the end of the year when the tax man comes knocking and you owe a certain amount it is also a very advantageous for you to spend a little bit of money because it's either going to go up to the alphabet mafia with uncle sam or you can spend it on something that you can use in your everyday shooting and your productions and it will also save you a little bit of money so this also is a great great area on when to invest into gear. But again, consider the numbers, consider how long it's gonna to take to make your return on investment and consider how it's going to benefit you going forward and consider also the lifeline of how long that piece of gear will probably last in your kit. I think the longer that it can last without being phased out, uh, the better and the longer that you can use that, the better, of course. So this is a lot for one video. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's definitely something that has been on my mind in the last year as I've sold off almost 70% of my gear, trying to live a little bit more minimally and trying to create and uh, just rent more whenever I can for projects and things like that. Because we have personal lives outside of film. We have other things that require money. Uh, you know, maybe you're trying to buy a house, maybe you're trying to furnish the house, um, or maybe you're trying to go on a vacation or do other normal things. There is life outside of filmmaking, but this is something to consider so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh throw a comment down below on what you think on this and if this was helpful for you at all uh subscribe to my channel if you enjoy listening to me speak like this because uh, i don't enjoy editing a lot of what i say so catch you guys on the next one